dead meme. Hey guys, we're here to play some stationers, and I would like to do an introduction to logic. So I'm going to show you a very simple circuit, and then I'm going to move on to a more practical one. The first one is just to kind of help you understand how the system actually works, right? So as you can see, I've got a light right there. And if I walk into this room, it'll turn on. So how did that happen? Well, it's pretty simple. If you've handled anything like a PLC or any sort of industrial controller, I, or if you've been through any sort of electrical training, you'll likely be uh, somewhat familiar with what I'm about to show you. So we're going to look at the four major components. There are others to these circuits, but these are the ones that are the most, uh, the ones that are most prevalent. So you'll need a logic reader. This reads a sensor or some other device providing data. It could be a machine, but for in this case, it's a sensor. This is a compare unit. I consider this thing asking a question. And this is memory. This is what the, uh, what some, uh, it's a state that you need to remember. So when this asks a question, it has something to compare it to. And the logic writer, I would consider this like the thing that decides or the thing that can, that turns on or off or controls things. So from top to bottom, reads the, reads the data, asks the question, remembers the value, performs the action. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to start at the beginning of the circuit. This is an occupancy sensor. They understand one or zero or yes or no. With your screwdriver in hand, you'll cycle through and select occupancy sensor. And what you care about is active. So you're going to cycle through with the mouse. So basically what we've said is if the occupancy sensor right here and the state we're looking for is one. Now this compare unit this is kind of where a question is asked. So we set this to logic reader because we want to read this information. And what we're asking for is it equals. So it, you can cycle through with the left mouse click and the screwdriver, of course. But is it equals to what? So we cycle through here to select the memory. The memory state that we're looking for is what? So this is asking the question, does this equal what's in my memory, which is one? So then it will move on to this device. And since these guys are independently wired, this little blue cable is uh, mostly for um, human uh, I interaction so that you can easily read and see what's going on. I would like to also credit cows or evil because that's where I kind of got the idea. He's got a, a YouTube channel that I think uh, has helped me quite a bit to learn this game. But back to the logic writer. This device is reading the compare unit, so the device that asks the question. So, what it's now what we're asking it to do is we want it to turn on, to cycle uh, WSL2, so that or it's WSL1, so that is workshop light one. So we've labeled it because there are several lights in here, and you know if you don't label these things when your base gets bigger, uh, if you got two airlocks and you cycle an airlock that you don't mean to because you're reading gas on the wrong one. Huge problem. You should label things. So what what this has done, this has said there is an occupant. Yes, one. This guy says, I am looking to read whether one or zero. He tells the compare unit one or zero compares it to its memory, which is one. That's what it's looking for. Equals. Does it equal one? In this case, it is yes. So it goes to the logic writer and ask the question from the compare unit, is your state accurate or am I getting any information? So if this is one, it'll get data down this wire into this compare unit. You'll select this uh, up here. This is the device that you're going to activate, turn off on whatever. It depends on the circuit that you're working on. And this is the state that you wish it to enter. So. If I leave this room, this occupancy sensor will eventually read zero and it'll turn it off. Now, this doesn't sound super um, useful. Like uh, later on, things like this become a little bit more important, a little bit more prevalent. And that's a sneak peek for a future video as we figure out exactly how hard he works. So I'm going to move on to a more practical circuit, one that you're likely to build and that is highly valuable. All right, a more practical circuit 
again, let's uh, credit Cows or Evil because I'm literally using his setup pretty much to the T. So hopefully with the first part portion of the video, you understand how the logic system works. And this is a more logical or a reasonable application or where you're likely to actually see it done. So this logic reader is reading the hydro sensor. So I've renamed it. This is a gas sensor. We've done this so that we actually know what the temperature of the room is. You could set it to read a bunch of other things, but that's not what we're concerned about. So the reason why we care about uh, keeping this room at a stable temperature is because this is where our plants initially were. And you also require a pressurized room, if you're not playing on easy, to eat and drink without taking any sort of harm to yourself from opening your helmet. And the plants also want a certain temperature in which to live in. So let's start from the top. The logic reader. This guy is reading hydro sensor. We've named him that for the sake of clarity. When you There are many gas sensors throughout the space, and if you do not label this thing you are going to have a huge issue making sure you're operating the correct things so this logic reader is reading the hydroponic sensor it's been cycled to temperature so now we go through and ask a question what is this question this question is less than is something less than this logic or this memory so in this memory is 290 so this is kelvin so is the temperature from this thing because we're reading the logic reader less than what's in memory which is 290 and if that is the case since he is the only wire flowing he's going to enter here to the logic writer this is where you cycle through to select which device you want using your screwdriver so if the temperature is less than 290 kelvin i want this wall heater to cycle on so that is fantastic, right? So now if it gets too cold, the heat comes on. But in reality, you're probably going to have more problems going the other way. You're going to need to cool things down more often, at least on the early game bases when you enter some of the other places like uh, some of the more difficult planets. It, it's a very different story. But that's a, a uh, topic for another time. So this is the run for the cooling system. So this guy is asking a question. Greater. Greater than what's in memory. What's in memory? Memory is 300. So this logic reader is telling us, it's asking, is the temperature greater than what's equal into here, which is 300? If so, then this wire runs to the logic writer. And because it's asked to compare logic, and he's the only one in that data circuit, that's all he's going to see. So we want to turn the wall cooler on. And remember, the one that's highlighted in green next to left mouse, that is the one that is currently active. So if you were to click on this, it'll cycle to wall heater. So this is currently set to wall cooler. And I want it to turn on. So what, what has happened here? This guy is giving us the information. This compare unit asks, is the temperature less than 290? If so, turn on the heater. So again, this guy is providing temperature. This one is asking the question, is the temperature greater than 300? And this is Kelvin, of course. If so, then we need to turn on the wall cooler. So there are many, many uses for logic circuits. That is probably the most, um, the one that you're more likely to build. And there is a logic circuit to open the door for you too. As well, there's solar tracking, but that has been covered very well by another individual, uh, by several individuals. So these solar panels will look at the, the, the sun, so when it comes up, it'll track it. Okay, and to close this off, I think we should talk about where these guys come from. You can use the electro printer. This is the upgraded version. They can come out of the uh, tier one. And basically, you're going to need a bunch of gold and copper to make the majority of these things. Uh, it can be made in tier one, which is nice. So you don't necessarily need to upgrade. And while we're here, um, let's turn you off in my tool belt. So this is a label maker. Uh, you come, you start the game with one. It's in your lander. And so if you just right click, it turns it on. And from there, you can select something like so. As you can see, Workshop Light 4. That one has been... Uh, edited that way 
Uh, there is a battery in this thing, so keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, you can print this at a tool manufacturer if uh, something happens to it. But of course, this is an introduction to logic. As I find some better uses for it, I may make some more videos. But I think the next logical step regarding logic is this sort of deal, where we have the, uh, the IC circuits or integrated circuits, and this allows you to write a program. But that is a discussion for another time. Uh, if you found this helpful, and uh, if you wouldn't mind leaving me a like or a sub, if there's some information that's pertinent that I should maybe pin to the top of the uh, to the top of the comment section, uh, let me know. But uh, keep in mind if you're gonna get into some ridiculous logic saying it's like this is an introduction level i'm not going to bother with uh in, in uh, intense complexity but thanks for showing up talk to you all again soon